Hey drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. Today I'm going to be looking and listening to Klaus Hessler. This guy is a relatively new player on the scene of greatness, so we're going to be checking him out. Here we go. Ah, some very tasty, cool stuff. I already like kind of this guy, <laughs> like a lot. Love the thematic approach, great sounding drums and cymbals, cool the setup that he's got. Kind of breaks things up instead of everything always going from high to low, left to right. So right there at the end, that's one of those more classic licks. I think I heard Tommy Aldridge do that many years ago on something, but it's right, right, left on the feet. And then usually you can do like two hands here, or he was doing something where he was actually doing a double stroke and bringing it off the cymbal. It was kind of fast, couldn't quite check that out, but carrying on here. Right, right, left. Okay, thank goodness for the cowbell. Very cool stuff. Sound like it's a nine. <clears throat> it's a nine pattern, but it's almost like in a duple feel with an extra eighth note. So like eight, eight, but nine. <laughs> but some very cool stuff. But that gives you that ostinato. I really love it when this kind of stuff happens. I'm a big fan of the early Terry Bozio solo drumming where he really got into the multi-pedal ostinatos between pitched bass drums and then did the whole cymbal drum kit that was just amazing and in fact i want to do a video on that one that's complete sabian terry bozio symbols drum set <laughs> symbol set anyways that idea where you can do these various different patterns over the top and breaks it up various drummers are doing that today and he this guy's obviously got this down let's continue Okay, huh, this guy's awesome. Great stuff, great sounds, cool stuff going on. Definitely kind of detachment of the upper body and the lower body. Right there with that shot, I was really studying the kick drum pattern because he's playing kind of what's the, known as the tomb bow in salsa music. One, two, three, four. Seems like the core rhythm is that kind of tomb bow-ish stuff because the left foot's doing kind of a 
sort of a rumba clave that's extended. So we have an extra beat. This is this odd meter kind of left foot clave thing and some, some very cool stuff. It's kind of reminiscent of some stuff that Antonio Sanchez is doing where he's playing these odd meter clave stuff. I'm, I'm happy to do it in 6-8 and 4-4, four, four, but I haven't really explored the odd meter stuff. These guys are, obviously, and he's able to do that. And so he's got kind of that reminiscent of the tomb bow with the clobbing in the left foot. And then, but when he gets into really going, the right foot's really attached to the right hand a lot of the time. There's some kind of um, linear stuff going on, more so earlier in the solo before he started establishing the left foot bell ostinato. So that's the main thing is that he's able to separate to a high degree. Um, guys like Horacio El Negro Hernandez, which I'll do a video on him, is like the other three limbs besides the left foot can go anywhere in space and time <laughs> kind of like antonio sanchez and but this guy's doing some really cool stuff so i'm excited let's continue shut up here now it's in four Take that back he can actually separate the other three limbs <laughs> sounded like a nine earlier there it sounded like in four back to this theme so cool with the hands so dun 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 So right, right, left, dun, da, da, ooh, da, 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 ooh, da, 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 very cool. And the foot's between the hands. That's one up, two down. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so left, right, right is basically the footing that's going on. So it's left foot, 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 shake it, dig it, dig that. So that's essentially the movements between the left foot and the two right foot doubles, except that what he's doing is he's healing back and forth. The toe's always playing, and then he's double stopping the heel on the cowbell with the bass drum, and then moving over to the heel on the hi hat pedal with the bass drum. So gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So very cool. A little awesome. Now. Then da 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 da. So playing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So he's got a six note pattern going on on top. Left hand lead. Da da da. Almost like a left hand forward swing. One, two, three, four. And then the bottoms are always doing the shiga da 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 So there's an overlaying rhythm that works nice with some nice polyrhythms on top. That was very cool. So a push-pull technique, kind of a la Jojo Mayer there, playing quarter note triplet rhythm, but was really eighth note triplet, one under two, under three, under four, under very quickly with ding a ding ding a ding Okay, so that was da 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 still based on one, two, three, four, that kind of idea over triplets while the left hand still plays kind of the forward or reverse swing. Wow! 
out. Ba ba do da da do da da do da 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 do da da do da Three in a row on top, very clean. Left hand asana, very sweet, steady. Dry symbol so you can keep this going. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, he's doing a lot of double strokes, six stroke rolls mixed up for a second half of the six stroke roll, a lot of singles in there, but mostly doubles. Ah. Kind of a ten thing, I think. Very, very cool.
Okay. <laughs> this is a very dense solo with lots of little movements inside the overall thing. So he's just now ready to segue into some kind of a, it looked like sort of hinting at a right hand Rumaklava and then the left hand's going to go crazy. He's doing these things with left hand ostinato, right hand having fun. Now it looks like he might be doing something, but he's also mixing it up. But very complex stuff. It gets kind of a little thick. Um, I'm really impressed with it on a definitely a mechanical coordination level. Musically, it's interesting as well, but it's very, very dense. And so it takes a little while to develop that kind of ear for this kind of layered rhythms because you're really being sort of almost forced to tug your ear in one direction or the other. And I think that's part of the beauty of it. It's supposed to kind of like really contrast what's going on with the ostinato underneath and the different flavors on top. But let's continue. Yeah, <laughs> that was very hip. I especially liked how this solo started and ended. And I'm, of course, I was really impressed with all the massive sort of Olympic athletic multi body movements. <laughs> oh, it's dense for me. Um, it's almost like the solo portion in the Neil Peart solo where he's playing the three, four kind of ostinato on the bass drum, the hi-hat, and then he's speeding up and slowing down pretty neat when you think about the ability to pull that off but on first listening to it's kind of cluttery sounding and so sometimes going in these directions again as I mentioned earlier when I paused it it's like your head's trying to be like pulled in two different directions and it's very dense and it can be very exciting but it's definitely a more cerebral approach to playing the drums I really love the snares on snares off the little melodic things the hand stuff was beautiful I guess I like sort of a melancholy aspect. Drums are already so machismo and in your face, and it's fun to be able to just take it and almost be almost more jock chop testosterone with it. And in some respects, that's what's going on here. Beautifully crafted, though. All the different layered guys, I think he had three cowbells on top, one on the bottom, some nice sort of some of those Terry Bozio kind of cup chimes. So, and very percussion-y in some many respects and just awesome technique and fluidity. And you can tell the guy is just a mastermind behind the kit. I can't imagine the amount of hours he sat down to sit and work out all those pedaling ostinatos and get all those different sounds happening. It's, it's truly amazing. And I'm into that to a degree. And I think I mentioned in one of my other videos, I went in that direction for a while and then got really moved by Steve Gadd again. And, I want to always balance what I can use with the band and what I can do in a multi-drum solo like this. But I love being able to explore these multi-pedal ostinatos and the different stuff he did was very inspiring. So it kind of gave me some ideas on some things I might incorporate into my solo because this guy's got a whole lot going on. So I hope you like my analysis of Klaus Hessler, a great drummer indeed. If you did, give me a thumbs up, like the channel, share it with your friends, and I'll be back with some more reaction and analysis videos. Until then, take care. Have a great day.